Okay, well, I was at the Caravan Camping Show. I come across a few people that I was very happy to talk to. These were boys who go and put in the super duper duper solar systems. These ones that cost, you know, $25,000 plus, you know, some even up to $100,000 and things like that. Um, big blooming wind turbines, six kilowatt wind turbines, stuff like that. <coughs> And, um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk about inverters. Now, with a lot of inverters that you'll come across in small systems, um, you basically have two options. Um, inverters are the devices that turn you from 12 volt or sometimes 24 volt into mains voltage. And you'll come across in your average electronics shop two options, modified sine wave and pure sine wave. Now, Modified sine wave is all right and does work quite all right with a lot of things. What it basically is, you've got nice, um, in your normal mains, you've got like nice curved sort of waves. Um, and they're sort of very, you know, smooth waves where basically, if you think of AC power and DC terms, it's like your positive and negative is you know, you get your two wires, your positive and negative is hooked this way, and then you swap it over, and then you swap it back, and then you swap it over. And it happens sort of 50 times a second, some countries it's 60 times a second. Um, but what sort of happens with your proper grid mains is it's not just sort of on and then swap around and then swap around and swap around and swap around like that. It actually, when you look at it, um, it's a series of nice curves. Now your pure sine wave will uh, emulate those nice curves. Your modified sine wave is more or less like a car indicator. It, they're all square. That's why sometimes modified sine wave inverters are known as square sine wave inverters. Now, for all intensive purposes, these things work. But they seem to make a lot of things buzz. And I mean, you charge up your little cordless drill and you listen to it and you think, hey, man, that's buzzing. It makes this buzzing noise. Um, but that's, you know, <laughs> that's modified sine wave for you. When you plug it into proper mains or pure sine wave inverter, all of a sudden it shuts up. Um, and essentially speaking, the pure sine wave sticks with it looking like the mains with the nice big curves. And the modified is just literally square. They just, you know, it's just like I was saying, that way, that way, that way, that way. And it, and it literally, if you see it, it looks like a bunch of blimmin, you know, basically straight up, across, straight down, across, straight up, across, straight down, like that you will realize that modified sine wave because it's so easy to emulate because it's almost just like a, a flasher like a car indicator or like those little earrings that women sometimes have in the christmas time with little you know flashing leds on them and things like that um they're very easy to emulate that sort of a signal and as a result the cost is very low they also are slightly wasteful with the power if you want to get the most out of a battery charge, choose a pure sine wave. If you don't like things buzzing, choose a pure sine wave. If you are using very specialized equipment, like medical equipment or stuff that costs you a mountain of money and you don't want any sort of strange, you know, failures of this very expensive equipment, um, then go for pure sine wave. I just hate things buzzing, so I went for pure sine wave. And when you think about it, everything is built for pure sine wave because it's built for the mains, which has that same curved wave, um, as opposed to the modified one. But, you know, you can get away with them, all right. The other thing about inverters is, whatever you do, don't skimp on the cables. Now, usually they include the cables with it, but the cables that they give you, or the ones that are already hanging out the back, 
really seriously try hard not to use any extension on those. Just use the length they give you and if you've got to build a little box to shade it in or whatever, maybe you just have to do that. Um, when you start lengthening out, you have current drawer issues and things like that. I did put mine on long wise and you know things weren't all they can be. I can run what I need to run, but I am not running it at you know what capacity says. Not with the inverter I've got now. With my older inverter, which was a cheap Chinese one that I no longer use on a regular basis because of basically it didn't like hot weather. Um, that didn't seem to have any current drill problems, and I've got a feeling it may have had some sort of a capacitor, or it just tried to draw the the wiring, uh, draw the power through the wires anyway. Um, and maybe this one's got a bit of a you know protection thing to stop things from overheating, and that's why it cuts out. But all the same, um, with inverters, you're best to have them as close as you can. Now, by all means, try and make it under 10 meters. But realistically, you should never be using cables any longer than the ones that were already on the machine or supplied in the box with it. Um, so that's the best option. Um, is you know to not go playing around trying to extend them. I done it in an attempt to keep my inverter in a cooler place, um, and that's why I put those wires longer. I didn't also understand at the time the that there might be current draw issues and things like that. But yeah, don't go playing with the wires going longer if you can help it. If you can't, use as heavy wiring as you can get. And you should also twine the wires around, like twist them around each other. Not super tight, but just sort of keep them around. Now, I've been told by the big boys that this stops electromagnetic interference, such as the radio waves coming off your cellular phone, from mucking up any of the power that the inverter, you know, the 12 volt power that the inverter is drawing from the battery. Um, the other thing is, if you were to put your, you know, one of them, say the negative up one side of the house and the positive up the other side and you bring it into the inverter, it has problems with what's called induction and for some reason or another it can, which I didn't really have explained to me, some of this <laughs> got a bit over my head, um, these problems with induction uh, can be caused by um, you know, having your negative up one side of the house and your positive up the other, and then you sort of have the inverter in the middle, and it, it's like a big loop. Um, it's like a big circle, the wiring essentially, um, and that'll cause you to have spikes as well, and may damage the inverter or give it a, a bit of a beating unnecessarily. Um, so if you don't twine the wires, um, which you should be. Uh, make sure by certain that you at least keep the wires close together. Um, but yeah, realistically, just use the cables that are implied, uh, supplied with the inverter and try to make a little box to keep the inverter cool. Or if you set it up first off properly, you can probably even keep the inverter inside the house. Um, and that, you know, with your insulation and that, that will help keep the inverter cool by being inside the house. But realistically, stick to the cables they've got. Um, I'll make a bit of a second video on a few of the issues you can have with smaller inverters and what I've found out about how the bigger inverters handle these issues.